goal is to win a national championship. that's important and um in building a successful team and it it's definitely not a small part of it i think it's like i think it's half talent and half like art chemistry yeah yeah that's good awesome thank you barrett appreciate it uh good so you guys are getting to hear from some really good players and the next two guys that I want to talk, they, they actually uh, just graduated last year. They went to Kaufman. If you guys remember, last year Kaufman won the Division I state championship, all right? So the same year we won is the same year they won. And it's, it's by no feat because, you know, I'll let you guys tell the story. Zach, why don't you hit me up, man? You're, you're good to go, brother. Hey, thanks. Uh, I'm Zach Hawson. I graduated from Dublin Kaufman. I play defense and I go to Denison, same as Barrett. And uh, yeah, going off that, I think one of the biggest things about it all was my junior year, we made it to the semifinals and we all knew that like this was the team. Like this team had all the players, everything. Everyone was like, Coffin's going to win this year. And we lost in the semifinals, which after the game, what I learned right then and there was the seniors came in and instead of being sad about it, they came up to us and they told us next year, you guys got to win it. Like you guys got to find out a way and do it for us. And like, so me and the, my other friends talked about it. And one thing that I think that this quarantine is really good for is making a connection off the field. That's what we did with our whole team when we were juniors. So when we were seniors, when we played, we knew that no matter what they like, we had each other's backs. And so after like all that, when we lost one game, and even that one game, after it, we told you, we said, we're the best team in the state. Like, we got to prove it. So the next game we play New Albany, beat them by seven. So I think that, like, what we you guys should do right now is, like, get some buddies, go play some lacrosse, like Alex said. And with that, like, create that connection because the only way you guys can be a good team is if you have a good connection with each other. And if you have that, you, you guys will kill it. Yeah. That's good, man. Um, so what, tell me what is the feeling like, right, going all the way to the cup and then getting beat in the final? Oh, it, it sucked. Like, knowing that, like Barrett said, we, the, we had a lot of seniors. Kim Bowdy, if you know him, plays at Denison also. He, like, big players that were leaving and we were thinking, like, oh, this, this is the last chance we're going to have. Next year we, don't, we won't get it. But – like I said, like with the seniors attitude teaching us, like, don't look down. You can't take this quarantine like a bad thing, like take it as something to improve. Yeah, that's great. That's good. So that would be my question to all of you guys, the sevens and eights this year, right? We've talked all, we talked all preseason about getting on the wall, right? Isolating and identifying your weaknesses, knowing where you need to get better, right? And, and ultimately, gelling together as a group and and Zach just hit the nail right on the head spending your time together in the off season making sure that you're doing all of the things especially right now like don't view this as a downside like yes it sucks right you've got four guys on here who spent all summer working really hard for their freshman and sophomore years to go and play college cross to have it basically taken away from them in their first couple games right? That sucks. But at the end of the day, you got to make the most out of it and you got to figure out another way to get it done. So I, I commend you, Zach. Thank you so much. I appreciate that very much. Good. Next person up is Evan. Good. Evan, I'll let you uh, tell everybody what the deal is. So boys, uh, I'm Evan James. Uh, I went to Dublin Coffin. I played midfield uh, and I go to Loyola University of Maryland now. Uh, and then Alex, you just want me to talk about like development and stuff? Or? Yeah, yeah. Because what 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 I thought would be a good thing for some of you guys, we always talk about analyzing the game, and we talk about mental reps as well as physical reps. And one of the big things that I'm always telling you is I'm saying, hey, how many things can you learn without beating your body up? How can you analyze the game to make yourself better so that when you step out on the field, you can see things from a different vantage point. And, and I think that's one of the things that uh, Evan is, is really good at. So I want, to, I want him to kind of talk to you guys a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, well, just a little story. Um, at Loyola, we, uh, we watched film for about, I mean, an hour, hour and a half a game. 
for a day uh, before a game. Uh, and that's every day throughout the week, you know, studying our opponents, studying ourselves mostly. Um, and, and the mental aspect of the game is, is almost more important than the physical. I mean, obviously, you got to be in shape. you got to have a good stick, um, you know, and all that stuff. But, uh, you know, being able to, to look back on a game and realize, you know, I did this great, I did this wrong, oh, I should have done this there is a huge part of the game, and you, and you got to learn from it. Um, I mean, when I was your guys' age, I was on YouTube, not watching, you know, the college guys play, the pro guys play, uh, trying to learn from them, and just to analyze the game, you know, especially during a time like this where you're not able to get out, you know, and, and necessarily play a six-on-six -six game, but you can still get better. Uh, and that brings me to my next point. There's a difference between going, going to shoot and going to pound the wall and getting better. Um, a big thing that I struggle with is I was going up and I would, I would drag myself out of the house. I'd go, I'd go shoot and play, but I was just, I was just throwing the ball against the wall. You know, I wasn't getting better. It was something that Alex really helped me with was, was going out there and practicing whether it's 30 minutes, an hour, like it was a game, you know, I'm breaking a sweat. I'm going hard. I'm, I'm knowing what I want to achieve that day. Um, and I think that really helped me, uh, you know, separate, you know, just, just going and actually going to get better. Yeah. That's good. And, and what's the thing I tell you guys? Play with what? Intention, right? Have intention behind everything that you do. So you have intention with every time you go to the weight room, intention every time you practice, every time you sit down and you start scrapping out, working through the playbook, or you're watching tape, or you're watching yourself play on video, right? Any of those things that you're doing, you're always doing it with intention. And that will be the thing that separates good players from average players so you've got to make sure that you're doing those things because i will tell you right now some of you are going to be really good middle school lacrosse players but if you don't push yourself to get to that next level in high school you'll be an average player and the the great thing between middle school and high school is that guys right now who maybe maybe weigh 95 pounds by your sophomore year in high school you can weigh 195 pounds right? A lot will change physically from this year to next year and from next year to the year after. So if you're not doing the things like Evan said, like these guys are saying about building the community, gelling yourselves together, getting out on the wall, working with intention, eating, working out, going for runs, like building yourself up. Like literally, if, if you want to be the best high school team, if you want to be a great player, if you have aspirations of going and playing in college, or if you just want to be a, a decent high school player and you want to make the team, right? Each of those goals that you pick for yourself, each one of them is going to require a different amount of intensity. And the only way you are going to be able to accomplish exactly what you are looking for is if you are clear first on what you want, and then second, very, very clear on how you're going to go and get it. And that means doing the work. OK, that's a really, really important piece for you guys to get on there and know that you got to get in there and do the work. All right. Good. So uh, does anybody have any questions right now? Anything that you guys would want to ask any of these four guys that have already talked? Nope. Nice and quiet. Awesome. So then I'm going to bring on I've got two more people that I want you guys to. Uh, hear some hear some wise words of wisdom from so uh this next guy that's going to do some talking for me if i can find him on here uh there he is my man so a couple years ago you guys may have heard of a, a school called denver university all right and uh they ended up winning the division one national championship and the guy who's talking right now i've known him for quite a while now his name's jake he's from ua and Jake, why don't you tell them a little bit about your uh, adversity, the stuff that we, we were talking about. Good. Hold on, brother, before you get going. I've got to – there you go. Now you're good. Go for it. You can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. You're good. Okay, what's going on? Um, I don't know, you know, what you've told them, but my name's Jake. I played at University of Denver. Played lacrosse there. I'm from Upper Arlington. Um, played there for four years, and I – tore my ACL my junior year, which is uh, just a little bit of adversity there. <laughs> Only a little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nine months long. Um, but 
I went there, I played long stick midi and defense and started as a freshman, freshman sophomore year. Um, we had a really good first two seasons. We won a national championship my sophomore year. Coming back my junior year, really good shape, you know, prepared really well. And two weeks before the start of my junior year in practice, I tore my ACL, which is um, was obviously pretty uh, disheartening and really tough. You know, going to that season, we had a really good team. I was really excited. Um, and it all ended that quickly. And I missed the entire year. Um, we went on to have a decent season and lost early in the postseason, the first round after being the number two seed in the tournament. And on top of, you know, the injury, that was just an awful way to end that year. And it only just gave me more motivation to continue to rehab and get better. Um, but just going back to, you know, when I initially got hurt, um, it was obviously really tough. But one of the biggest things I think that really helped me was having a really good support system and group around me, whether that's, you know, family or friends, but people that have the same kind of positive attitude and driven personality to, um, you know, get better constantly. They're not content with where they're at. And I think that really helped me push through times when I wasn't able to get on the field and I just had to sit there and watch. And I think that all that, you know, helps with the recovery process. And another thing that really helped me get through that was, I think, obviously everybody says this, but just the appreciation that you get for something when it's taken away from you, especially when it's, you know, an injury that's truly that bad, like nine months, nine, 10 months, that it just motivates you in ways that aren't normally there to get back and truly appreciate when you get back on the field to work as hard as you can. And, you know, that senior year, once I got back on the field was tough as well. You know, even once you fully recover and, you know, sometimes maybe like a broken leg or a sprained ankle might be different, but with an ACL, there's a lot of mental adversity with it too, not just physically because it is such a tough injury that, you know, you work so hard to get back that you obviously don't want something like that to happen again. You want to make sure you're full strength. You want to be confident on your knee. So just being able to stay confident mentally as well is a big part of it. And, you know, trusting the work that you've put in, that you're stronger than ever and ready to come back. But um, I would just say the two – or at least one, one of the big components is having a good support group around you. And, you know, that's adversity in general, not just when you're hurt, but even where you guys are at and, you know, trying to get better at lacrosse or whatever it may be. Um, having people around you that have the same goals and are driven and not content with where they're at. And that'll help you get through all sorts of adversity, you know, the rest of your life. But um, that's kind of where I'm at. I don't know if you want me to hit on some other stuff, yeah. Alex. But No, I, I think that's great. That's good. Um, so the question that I would ask you is like, you know, we're talking about being down and out for quarantine for, you know, maybe up two months, right? Yeah. But your injury was nine months in recovery, right? Yeah. Tell, like, talk a little bit about what it was like maybe at the first, third, of that injury, what your mindset was like, and then the middle, and then maybe the tail end, because you go through different phases, right? You yeah. feel differently about each one of those phases. And the more interesting thing is, right, we, you guys are losing your season in, in middle school, right? He almost lost his, his season as a, as a junior going into his senior year. And not only are you potentially losing like the ability to play, but you are also now fighting for your position and all those sorts of things, fighting to get back on the field. So maybe talk a little bit about the stages of what that was like for each one of those. Um, so, you know, obviously, I mean, if you break it up, I guess, into three months from a nine month injury, but obviously the first third of that injury is really tough mentally because 
physically you really can't do much. Um, and it's a lot more pain with rehab and getting new flexibility back and your strength, which is, you know, really tough. But, yeah. you know, as you progress through each part of the rehab, you know, little things get you more motivated as you can start, you know, hitting those milestones of more flexibility, more strength. Um, as you start getting on the field and working harder and you start trusting your knee a little bit more here and there, um, those are really big milestones that just add, continue to give you motivation in those goals, I think, and not thinking it in terms of nine month rehab, but having those intermediate goals help yeah. you get through each portion of it. Um, and then, you know, working back from being out an entire season and my freshman, sophomore year, I played long stick midi and my junior year, I was ending up going to switch to close defense and I got hurt. I was playing a little bit of both, but I got hurt and you end up, you know, somebody's going to take your position is going to be playing that position for the entire year. And I think it's really easy to come back and, you know, maybe feel like you already lost your position. Somebody's been playing there for a full year. They have chemistry or, you know, this guy did pretty well. Um, and maybe I'm not going to get my spot back. But, you know, that was never a mindset for me because, you know, I don't know if it was helped since I'd played from freshman year, but I just had the mindset and mentality that I'm not going to be sitting on the bench and I need to work hard enough to show them that I deserve to be back on the field. I'm ready to be back on the field. And, you know, by senior year, by when I got back, I was playing just as much as before I got hurt. So, and we made it all the way to the final four that year. So. Yeah. That's great, man. So you guys are, and Jake, thank you very much. I really appreciate you sharing. Um, so, I, you know, what you guys are hearing is you're hearing from a lot of these guys who have played the sport. They've, they've been there. They've had to overcome adversity. And what you're hearing a lot about is team chemistry. And you're hearing a lot about putting in the work when nobody's watching, doing that hard stuff when nobody's paying attention, okay? And really just working on shaping your mindset. And I think those are all really, really good things for you guys to hear because me telling you that all season long, Coach G telling you that all season long, your club coaches, hopefully they're telling you the same thing. But I think it, it comes with a little bit more weight when you hear it from those guys that are, are just ahead of you, right? Who are in maybe a position where someday you feel like you might want to be. And uh, that brings me to my last person who I want to share with you guys. If you guys are into uh, hockey at all, um, you guys will know this guy, uh, Nick Felino. How you doing, brother? Good, man. How you guys doing? Good. Hey, good. So I'm going <laughs> to go ahead and put you in there. Let the guys kind of see. And Nick, why don't you tell me a little bit about uh, life, baby boy? Tell me about it. <laughs> Quarantine and baby. I know. Uh, yeah, right. yeah. You know what? It's honestly, I have an optimistic outlook on life. So, uh, you know, when this all went down, I think like anyone, you know, you're kind of naive and, and don't really understand the magnitude of everything that's going on. And then as you start to get informed and, and understand the severity of this and, and the situation we're in, um, I think it snaps you into a, a mindset of, all right, let's go, you know, and, and, and that's kind of where I'm at. I, I looked at my wife. I mean, none of you guys are married. You better not be. Um, but uh, I looked at my wife and I said, you know, I got three small kids and they don't know any different. They look at us to lead. And I said, we got to make this as much fun as possible for them. We got to make the most of this. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of guys don't know, maybe like I'm never home, uh, especially this time of year. I'm gearing up for playoffs. Uh, you know, my mindset is, is really – geared towards my team and, and my family respects that because when I'm home I'm present but when I'm not they understand that I, I got a job to do but I said this is time I'll never get back so I, I want to make the most of it I mean I taught my daughter how to ride a bike a couple of days now and uh, you know I'm playing with my boys more than I'm ever able to and so it's it's you know it's been actually pretty special in, in trying to take a, a you know a terrible situation and uh, one that you have to respect but make something good out of it and we try to do that that's good and to talk a little bit about, um, like, as a group, as a team, even as yourself, right, maybe in juniors or even even as a professional, right, overcoming 
you know, adversity, overcoming some sort of an obstacle that was in your way that, you know, you just had to move and keep going. Well, I was going to say, like, this is probably the, the greatest mindset training you guys will ever get uh, because there's no opponent right now, but it's just you, you in the mirror. Um, are you going to be the kid that just sits there, doesn't do anything, eats Doritos, hangs out? Or are you going to be the one that, you know, takes this as an opportunity to, to work on your craft, work on you as a person? Uh, to strengthen yourself so when adversity does hit you're like well I just went through that that this is nothing compared to what I went through and and let's be honest guys this is not to you know but this is life or death right now that a lot of people are dealing with you know this is a serious uh, moment that unfortunately we all have to live through you know I, I wish none of you guys had experiences at your age but it's the reality it's going to make you stronger people in the future uh, you know I'm getting to go through this at 32 years old you guys are having to do this in your high school years your middle school years and that's that's a that's a hard thing to, to try to manage when you're already figuring out so much. So you guys naturally will, will come out of this if you handle it the right way. If you use this time to work at bettering yourself, you know, to nobody's watching. I heard your coach just say that nobody's watching you right now. So what are you willing to do? Are you willing to put in the work? Are you willing to come, you know, out of this when, when you hit the ground running, when this is all over, are you going to be a better version of yourself? And that's what I've tried to take out of this. You know, this is a challenge for me. I, you know, I'm in the gym uh, as much as I can be right now because I don't want to let my team down when we do get back. And I'm not allowed to skate. Obviously, we, we're, we're kept away from the rink. So I got to find other ways to, to stay as optimal as possible right now for my team. I have responsibilities at home, but then it's what else I can do to, to make sure I'm growing as a player. You never stop growing. It doesn't matter what's going on. This is a situation where you guys are all faced with, uh, you know, a tough time. But you've got you to find the fun in it you got to find the, you know, the purpose in it. And if you guys do that, I mean, it's, it'll be incredible what, what you guys will be able to overcome uh, later in life. And, uh, you know, because life isn't fair. You've heard that phrase how many times? Uh, I feel for you guys. You're going through some of the most fun years of your lives, probably gearing up for a great season. Um, you know, so I, I do. I feel for you guys in that regard because, you know, I want, I want to see you guys play and have fun and do what you love. But all of us have had something taken away from us that we love. So, you know, you got to find passion in new things, find passion about yourself that you never even realize. You know, you're going to, you're going to come up with things and, and learn things about yourself in this time that you never realized. And, and that's the treat. And that's the, the, the specialness that you have to, you know, see in this. And, um, you know, so that's, that's my message to you guys is, is understanding, you know, this, this situation has to make you stronger as a person, um, you know, as a student, uh, as an athlete. I mean, those are all, and as a son or, uh, you know, sibling, and it's it's amazing uh, if you can look at it that way. How much you can actually embrace this time right now and, and become better for it. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So I think the, there's a couple takeaways there. All right, you know, he's he's saying that uh, one thing that I absolutely 100% agree with. Okay, this will be one of the best mindset challenges, obstacles that you will ever face in your life. And it will be interesting because someday you are going to look back on this and you are going to have to look at it as one of those defining moments. Because the interesting thing is that when bad things happen, they don't always happen to everybody. They happen to pockets of people or they happen to individuals. But when you look at this, this is something that is globally happening across the world. And what you will see in 20 years, in 15 years, or in 30 years, you're going to see the ramifications of people's mindsets on how they interpreted this. Some people are going to look at this and they're going to view it as the worst thing ever. And it's going to make them change everything about their life. They're going to hold on to everything and they're not ever going to be able to grow or change or, excuse me, or expand. And some people are going to look at this with a positive mindset and they're going to take great things away from this and they're going to use that to propel themselves forward in life. You, only you get to make that decision. And what you have to be aware of is the people that are around you, like Nick was saying, a great support system. The people that are around you are either going to add to that mindset or they are going to detract away from it. And this can be your friends. This can be your teammates. This can be people in your own family, okay? But you have to be in control of what's going on upstairs between the ears. You have to make the decision how you're going to interpret this. You have to view this as something that's going to make you better. And then not only that, 
but you've got to do the work that's going to make you better. Okay. Um, I don't have anything else for you guys. I just wanted to get you guys together so that we could talk one more time as a team. Cause ultimately I wasn't there on the last day of practice. I didn't get to see you guys before you split that Friday. And I haven't been able to see all your beautiful faces at the same time. So I think it's good for you guys to hear some, some good words from some smart guys um, who, are, who are really good athletes, great athletes who are, are, are dealing with the same things that you guys are dealing with. And you get to hear how they're handling it. And then you're going to get to turn on ESPN next year and you're going to get to watch them and see how they've handled it. You're going to get to see what has translated from all of this. And hopefully, depending on what your goals and aspirations are, you guys are going to be able to turn this into something strong for yourselves, something that's going to make you better and ultimately make Dublin lacrosse, right? Where you guys decide to go for high school. If you go to Jerome, you're going to make Jerome lacrosse better. But that's the goal is the goal is that you guys get better. You guys get better as individuals. You guys get better as a team. And then you elevate everyone around you. All right, guys, I really appreciate everybody that came on the call. I hope you guys have a wonderful night. I'll send you guys a follow-up email in a little bit. You guys take care of yourselves, and you guys have a good night, all right? Peace.